Hello, Robert Bell here from Brooks Equipment, and today we're honored to have as an interview guest Jim Monju from Space Age Electronics, located just outside Boston, Massachusetts. We're going to talk to Jim about some ways that his company has quickly adapted to dealing with a COVID-19 world. We're all familiar with that by now. Hopefully, we're moving closer to a post-COVID-19 world, and I'm going to ask Jim to talk about some tips and ideas that fire and life safety professionals can incorporate into their offering to their customers moving forward. Don't forget this content and other videos that would be helpful to you in a COVID-19 world are located on our landing page at www.brooksequipment.com forward slash COVID-19. And with that, I'd like to welcome Jim. Jim, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks, Robert. Fantastic. So I was just sharing with the audience that we're going to talk about some ways that you've dealt with uh, some of the challenges that COVID-19 has um, presented you and your company with. Uh, you can talk real briefly about what your company does and, and then how you've uh, implemented some of, these, some of these strategies and tips and ideas uh, to deal with this COVID-19 situation that we're currently dealing with. That's great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, COVID-19 pre and post is a very fluid topic, um, and I don't think, I don't think, I know nobody saw it coming. Um, being a company of 57 years in the industry, family-owned, my father started the business, you know, our family is our business, our employees are part of our family. Um, so during this whole thing, you know, keeping everybody safe, it was a priority of our organization and our executive team. Um, so as we were moving forward, making sure that our people realize that they're part of the life safety industry and they want to continue to contribute and work every day and make sure that they're delivering products that are keeping people safe on the front line uh, at these hospitals and these nursing homes and these uh, grocery stores and whatever. So um, our biggest key was to figure out how to keep the business operational without interrupting service to our customers out there in the fire alarm industry. Excellent. Jim, talk to us uh, briefly about uh, some of the ways you implemented some of these safety protocols that you feel keep your employees safe and, of course, keep your customers safe as well. Absolutely. Um, so as soon as we got the word that we were going into a lockdown in Massachusetts, our executive team got together and, you know, we, we asked ourselves a couple key questions. Yeah, building in people, is everybody feeling okay? Is people feeling safe? Um, the pro what processes are we going to have to implement and get uh, deployed very quickly when people come back to work? Um, and then we need to make sure that we have the financial support for both the materials we're going to need to bring in and the training that we're going to need to do with everybody to keep everybody safe and operational. So to start at the top, the building and the people, uh, we needed to really figure out how to lock down. We have three facilities and lock down these facilities. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we had to make sure the public wasn't going to walk in and infect our building. We were protecting our building. Um, so we locked our front door and put a doorbell in the front, and somebody would come and uh, meet that person with signs that say, you've got to wash your hands, you can't come into the building without an escort. Um, if you have packages to drop off, leave them there, we're good. Our building has lots of entrances, exits for fire safety, but we had to lock a lot of those down without a physical lock because we couldn't stop the safety. So we put a lot of technology of just alarms on the door to remind people, you can't go in and out of these buildings. You have one way in and one way out of our building from a COVID-19 standpoint. Um, so we did a lot of signage um, and all of the walk-in areas where you had the cleaning materials for your hands, a sign on what to do, uh, designated areas to be at. Our building is broken down into six zones. So we have people that report to their areas and we've trained and worked with everybody to make sure that they're not cross zoning and going into other areas to infect it. Uh, we looked at areas like our break room and kitchen area um, and that's mission critical. So there was a lot of precautions, closed off a few of the doors, people going in and out, max number of people in that room. Um, and again, giving people the training to make sure that we're respecting each other because our people, think that their other employees are part of their family too. And they're, they're, everybody realizes to watch out for each other and trying to keep everybody safe and their family safe. So uh, a number of those areas um, we put out there, you know, signage is easy um, and we can do that. And in the fire alarm industry, signage is critical to life safety. Um, so this tied in very nicely to doing that. Um, and then obviously we had a lot of training to do. 
Um, you know, finance, finance bought all the materials. We implemented it all. We changed the way people walk around the building. Um, we changed the way people move material around the building. We focused in on our shipping docks to make sure that our ship, our people, our partners coming in, delivering us materials, understood what our rules were now in our building. And we had a video entrance for the door and shipping. So Bill and Frank from FedEx and UPS, they know the process. We, we buzz them right in. Somebody new comes in, we have to go explain to them what they have to do. You have things like fork trucks and tools that we call community tools that have to be wiped down every day and looked at every day. Um, we have light switches and doors that get wiped down and looked at every day. And all these things had to start happening and changing the way we do things. Um, even down to the social distancing in our building, we had to train and get everyone together in small groups and explain to everybody what the requirements were, six feet apart. We had to change our manufacturing process to make sure you know, people had the right distance and could work safely together. So um, you know, a lot of these things are gonna stay implemented after and post COVID-19 because they're good practices. It's cleanliness, it's spruced up the area. I mean, it really has made a lot of people safer and feel better here at work. Excellent, Jim. Sounds like you guys have done a lot to, to protect your employees. As our fire and life safety professionals, uh, those customers of ours, move into this post-COVID-19 world, and hopefully, again, sooner rather than later, uh, what are some of the opportunities you see for them to provide solutions to their customer base moving forward? Absolutely. We're, we're witnessing it now. Um, signage is easy. You know, giving people proper instructions having the right documentation available to people in the event of an emergency, things like emergency phone numbers posted in areas where people know what to do, documentation, floor plans of the building so you know where things are. Like all of those things are critical when it's go time. Um, and it really ma makes a spotlight on being prepared with those things in the buildings, whether it's your own building like we are here, or it's our customers who go on out there to take care of other companies they should be thinking about these things saying, you know, we really have to be thinking about this in the future and signage and emergency phone numbers um, and graphic maps of how to get in and out of a building, whether you're exiting and even down to the point of first responders coming into your building. Some of these manufacturing facilities are large. Ours certainly is a fire department came in. They don't know where to go. We need to have a good map that tells those people where to go inside of our building to respond to people. Excellent. Thank you, Jim, for sharing that. And hopefully our customers will be able to take some of the tips that you shared today and in, invest in their customer base and the relationships that they already have that are existing. And, and moving forward, they can help keep their customers in a safer place like you guys have done at Space Age. Thank you for joining us, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Excellent. And that was an interview with Jim Munju from Space Age Electronics talking about some of the things that he and his company have done to keep their employees in a safer place in the COVID-19 world. We hope that you've uh, learned some tips today on how you can keep your customers safe, especially as we move into a post-COVID-19 world. This video and other content um, that's specific to COVID-19 will be still available on our website at www.brooksequipment.com forward slash COVID-19. Thanks again for joining us today and stay tuned for more episodes like this that'll talk about opportunities that will exist and ways you can stay safe. Thank you.